What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 WWE wrestlers who won a championship without even wrestling. How is that possible? I need to find this out. What's what's going on here? How do you win a championship without actually even wrestling? Well, I think Triple H did at one point when they were really booking this guy as just unstoppable. I believe he won the um, the new World Heavyweight Championship. They just gave it to him. Monday Night Raw, I think Eric Bischoff just like, here you go, there you go, we need a champion, here you are, the new champion on Raw, I believe that did happen, so I'm guessing that may be in this video, I don't know, but that's one instance where he, he didn't wrestle to win that, he just was gifted the championship, the World Heavyweight Championship from Eric Bischoff, and here we are, I'm your new champion, guys, on Monday Night Raw, so we're gonna check this out, appreciate all the love and support. Let's get right into this one, man. WWE should be one of the most exciting moments imaginable. Yet over the years, WWE have opted to crown new champions in some of the most unconventional ways possible. From awarding titles to wrestlers for the sake of it, to simply finding titles in travel bags, WWE have decided to deliver a title change in an incredible lazy way in the past. And most of these title changes were met with vast criticism from the overall fan base, and mm -hmm. for good reason. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE wrestlers who won a title without even wrestling. Yep. Be sure to subscribe <laughs> and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive layers. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10, The Big Show. Hmm. In the summer of 2009, WWE implemented plans to make Edge and Chris Jericho the face of the WWE tag division. The acclaimed duo would win the undisputed tag titles, but it went all wrong when Edge. I forgot they they won the 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 tag titles at one point. Suffered a serious injury that would put him on the shelf for the rest of 2009. Instead of stripping Jericho of the titles, WWE allowed Jericho. Yeah, I think he teamed up with Big Show. Yeah, I forgot about this. Yeah, I was like Big Show. What? When did he have to do that? He did team up with Big Show for a little bit. Damn, this is bringing me back down memory lane. To pick a new partner, and behind the scenes, Jericho wanted to team with Kane, but the WWE had other ideas and wanted Jericho to team with the Big Show. Despite initial reservations, Jericho, during an episode of Talk Is Jericho, would label Big Show as his favorite tag team partner that he's ever had. <laughs> Show is my favorite tag team partner of all time, by far. And that was because I was uh, tag team champions with Edge, Edge tore his Achilles tendon and he was going to be out for eight months. So they didn't want to strip me of the title. So Vince wanted me to have another partner because we were going into a feud with DX. And a lot of people wanted to put me with a young guy. And I said, we can't do this. DX will eat you alive unless I have somebody that's, you know, a world champion level that can deal with them. And so I suggested Kane and Vince suggested Big Show. And I said, okay, great. But the two in that would have been interesting. Jericho and Kane, that would have been an interesting combination. But it you know, ultimately worked out for them to go with Big Show, so. Instantly bonded as Jericho and Big Show's big reveal, pun intended, would come at the 2009 Night of Champions event when Big Show debuted as Jericho's partner in a tag match against Legacy. Number nine, Booker T. That's One of the crazy. That I forgot about SmackDown that, man. SmackDown between 2006 to 2007 was a feud between Booker T and Chris Benoit. The two embarked in a best of seven series for the U.S. title. I remember the this. encountered a huge issue when Booker suffered an injury halfway through the series. Instead of canceling the series completely, Booker was substituted by Randy Orton, and Orton would act on behalf of Booker in the hopes of winning Booker the prestigious U.S. title. The final match of the series took place in January 2007, and Orton was able to win the final match of the series, crowning Booker the new champion in the process. This was certainly a unique approach to an injury, but it worked in everyone's favor, as both Booker and Orton attained astronomical heat for, in essence, cheating their way through the best. Which is crazy that that can happen out there. <laughs> I want you to finish out this best of seven series. You win it for me. I get the title. Everyone wins, I guess. <laughs> seven series. Number eight, Midian. Amidian is mostly known for being part of the Ministry of Darkness stable, as well as his infamous gimmick in 2000 yeah. where he ran around the arena, well, with a fanny pack on, and only a fanny pack. While yeah. fans may be surprised to learn about the former Ministry member, is that he's actually a former European champion. In 1999, during a backstage segment, Midian casually mentioned to Shane McMahon that he had found the European title mm -hmm. in McMahon's travel bag. Midian would then boldly ask McMahon if he could have the title, and McMahon bizarrely said yes. 
this was one of the more unusual yet lackluster ways the title has changed wow. hands in WWE, and it led to a ton of questions surrounding how WWE saw the European title in terms of credibility. Yeah, that when they when it just you get awarded the title off of a backstage segment, like, hey, bro, I saw the title in this bag. You mind if I have it? Yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> That's when you know the title means absolutely nothing. And legitimacy. Number seven, Dean Douglas. The In Your House 4 event was supposed to be Dean Douglas's night. He was set to challenge Shawn Michaels for the Intercontinental title, and it was widely believed that Douglas was going to win the match and the title. The issue was that HBK wasn't a fan of Douglas, and second, uh... HBK engaged in a bar fight with a Marine, rendering him unable to compete. WWE orchestrated an angle which saw HBK this. forfeit the title and Douglas will become the new champion. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, this particular story watching it on a on a previous video. His reign would be short lived as he would then be challenged by Razor Ramon and Ramon would end up defeating Douglas, <laughs> giving Douglas the shortest intercontinental That's title cold, reign in company bro. history. That's cold. Number six, Mankind. One of the most entertaining parts of the Attitude Era was the hardcore <laughs> title division. The title was contested under 24-7 rules and it yep. was total mayhem each and every week on Raw and SmackDown. <laughs> the title was first introduced in 1998 during a storyline which saw the corporation faction manipulate Mankind yep. into doing their bidding. Mm -hmm. To entice Mankind, Vince McMahon gifted Mankind a broken, taped up title that was labeled the hardcore title. It's unknown what the original plans were for the title, but the Hardcore Championship went on to have 230 different reigns associated with it. Which is crazy. Which is crazy when you think about it, but it was actually it was actually pretty entertaining <laughs> what they were doing with the, the Hardcore uh, title. For the next couple of years, whilst the introduction of the title may have been unconventional, establishing the new title back in 1998 certainly benefited the WWE product as a whole. Mm -hmm. Number five, Piper Niven. When Sonya Deville went down with an ACL. Yep, you know what? That he's right. That recently just happened. It recently just happened. <laughs> she ended up just saying, you know what? I'm gonna be your tag team partner to Chelsea Green. And Chelsea's like, what? And she, she made sure she understood. I said, I'm gonna be your tag team partner. Got it? All right. <laughs> and that's how she became tag team champion. L injury, it put a huge dent into the WWE Women's Tank Division. Deville was one half of the reigning Women's Tank Team Champions alongside Chelsea Green, and now WWE had to go back to the drawing board when it came to the division. WWE decided to have Piper Niven become Green's new partner, and they did this by Niven simply declaring herself as the second half of the Women's Tank Team Champions. The presentation of Niven as Green's new partner received criticism from fans as it was lazily executed and once again further evidence that WWE cared very little about their women's tag division. For sure. Like, there was... Once again, I don't even know why it's still a thing, but... It's still a thing. <laughs> Number 4, Mark Henry. The world's strongest man, Mark Henry, managed to win his first title in WWE in 1999. However, unlike the rest of Henry's many title victories, his first title victory didn't even require him to win a matchup. When Henry turned his back on good friend D'Lo Brown at SummerSlam <laughs> and allowed Jeff Jarrett to become double champion, Jarrett awarded Henry by gifting him the European title. Once again, this led to questions surfacing Damn, surrounding the credibility bro. of the yeah, title. They just did not care about the European title. That's wild how they, it's just getting passed around <laughs> for free. That's crazy. So, as Jarrett simply giving the title away didn't exactly portray the title as prestigious or valuable. WWE had no substantial plans for Henry as European champion as yeah. he quickly dropped the title within you a can few tell. weeks, making his title reign a complete waste of time. Number three, Dolph Ziggler. When Dolph Ziggler won the world title in 2013, Great it was moment. a special moment as Ziggler had worked extremely hard to reach the top of the WWE ladder. <sighs> the moment was also in sense Ziggler's first world title win that fans fondly remember as his world title win in 2011 was presented in a controversial and criticized manner. Back in 2011, during the feud between Ziggler and world Jeez. champion Edge, Edge was forbidden from using the spear in a match. Edge ignored this rule and decided to use the move anyway, and due to his rule breaking, Vicky Guerrero decided to outright strip Edge of the world title and I believe I remember Ziggler this storyline. Was mm -hmm. Dolph Ziggler ready for the world title at this time? Well, it's up for debate, but simply handing a wrestler the world yeah. title in this way wasn't a great look for the once prestigious title. 
Ziggler's reign will be short-lived as the Rated R Superstar would receive his rematch on the exact same show. Yep. And Edge would defeat Ziggler, ending Ziggler's title reign in quick fashion. Yeah, <laughs> it's just it's like, damn, man. Poor Ziggler, man. <laughs> Jeez. Number two, Randy Orton. And WWE was sent into total chaos just before the 2007 No Mercy event. WWE's planned main event of the show was to see John Cena defend the WWE title against Randy Orton in a last man standing match. The issue was that Cena had suffered a major injury just days before the mm -hmm. pay-per-view and WWE had to think of how they were going to deliver a satisfying pay-per-view to the fans. The pay-per-view opened up with Vince McMahon simply awarding Orton with the WWE yep. title. This was somewhat disappointing, but WWE had a plan on making the title the focal point of the entire pay-per-view. The new champion would be interrupted by his former arch-rival Triple, Triple H, H, and the yep. game challenged Orton to an impromptu title match. In a shocking outcome, Triple H won, giving yep. him his first world title win since 2005. The crowd absolutely loved it, and WWE did a good job in delivering a memorable moment on pay-per-view. The night of action yep. wouldn't end there, however, mm -hmm. as Triple H had a scheduled match with Umaga on the show, and this would now be for the WWE title. After the game's successful title defense, he'd be booked to defend against Orton once again in yep. a last man standing match. <laughs> this was when Orton bro, he, bro, Triple H was working overtime that night, boy. He was working overtime. <laughs> would reclaim the title to close off a pay-per-view event like no other. Mm -hmm. And number one, Triple H. Got it. When undisputed champion Brock Lesnar became I exclusive to SmackDown. In I caught it, y'all. I knew it. it had to, he had to be number one. It's crazy. It's crazy. He had to work for it at no mercy, but there was a time where he didn't have to work for the, getting the championship. 2002, <laughs> WWE needed a title holder on Raw. Oh. So instead of holding a tournament to crown a new champion, WWE simply presented Triple yep. H with the big gold belt. This was the laziest option WWE Super had. Lazy, due bro. to their own laziness, the company had to work extra hard to portray the new title as on par with the WWE title. Over two decades after the game was unceremoniously awarded the title on Raw, fans still criticized the decision. Even legendary commentator Jim Ross had this to say on his podcast. It was very untraditional. Yeah. Yeah. Handing over a gift, the only time it might work is if you had a red hot heel that given that giving championship too might increase their heat mm -hmm. and their, their, their profile but in general it's not a good idea triple h should have he should have gotten a ring and it wasn't his call right mm -hmm. uh but he, we, to see him wrestle is always a bonus to me and because he's he, at that point in time he was really getting to be an amazing heel yeah we have it folks um, yep I caught it, man. There's no way that doesn't be on this list. They gave him the World Heavyweight Championship. Why? <laughs> just and from there, he was just a terror. So it's like, it's it's funny how fitting the number two spot was Triple H working overtime to win the World Heavy uh, the WWE Championship from Randy Orton after he just received it, win it, then have to face Umaga for the championship defend it then have to defend it in the same night against randy orton <laughs> the man he just beat for it in a last man standing match to lose it so i guess you can say you know it's come full circle you know him winning it the world heavyweight championship in the way he wanted and to defend the wwe championship and have three matches in one night i guess you can say it's a trade-off but Still in the grand scheme of things, there's no reason why a World Heavyweight Championship should be just given away <laughs> instead of some type of tournament, some type of match happening. I that's That definitely, definitely left fans questioning what the hell is going on in WWE back then. Comment down below. Let me know which one of these situations irritated you the most from this particular video for me it would definitely have to be the triple h winning a world heavyweight championship for no damn reason when i saw that happening i was just like what the fuck are we doing right now so let me know which one of these instances instances from this video definitely kind of annoyed you when it originally happened but i appreciate all love and support road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all on the next one peace